it's hip to eat your hips which are likely dotting the landscape and adding a pop of color about this time of season. And these are the perfect item for the procrastinating forager because they are said to get sweeter after a frost and you can pick them right into the snow. <laughs> Ooh, let's go make a simple and attractive rosehip vinegar. To the back cave. You will need rose hips, white wine vinegar, citrus fruits, wooden skewers, and a clear decorative bottle that's been sterilized. First, give the rose hips a bit of acupuncture so the goodness leaks out. Second, make sure your citrus peels have been given a good scrub beforehand, then peel and remove as much pith, that white stuff, as possible. Cut into pieces. Save the fruit or juice for another recipe. We happen to have an idea for your orange if you keep watching. Thread your rose hips and peels onto a skewer making a mini kebab and take a moment to fondly remember the barbecue season if you need to. Place the skewer into your bottle, fill the bottle with white wine vinegar, making sure that the fruit is completely covered. Close your bottle securely and shake then place in a dark location for two weeks. After two weeks, you can remove the skewer, or if you prefer to keep your pretty skewer in the bottle, you must make sure that the fruit is always covered by vinegar. Otherwise, spoilage may occur. Don't you feel fancy? I feel fancy. Vitamin C or not vitamin C? That is the question. Actually, rose hips are pretty well known for their high vitamin C content. And they say that about three rose hips is equivalent to the vitamin C content in an orange. And that would meet the daily value that is recommended in Canada of 60 milligrams. However, vitamin C is a very important nutrient that helps us to absorb iron, heal wounds, and provides with antioxidants. So you might want a little more in your day. They do recommend that you stay under 2,000 milligrams per day, but that's a lot of rose hips. Fun fact, during World War II, the British government paid collectors to gather rose hips so that they could make a rose hip syrup to feed to the children. This was because citrus fruits were nearly impossible to get during that time. Let's make our own syrup with this beautiful recipe adapted from Colleen at Grow Forge Cook Ferment. If you're interested in wild foods, you should check out her fantastic blog or take her foraging course. I have certainly enjoyed both and learned a lot from her. For your syrup, you'll need only three items. First, half a cup of fresh rose hips or a quarter cup of dried rose hips. One cup of water and half a cup of local honey. Remember to support your local bees and their keepers. This will just be a small batch, but you can double or triple the recipe if you like. If you haven't already, prep your hips by removing any stems, leaves, and brown flower bits. Fun fact, the flower bit is called a calyx. Maybe give your own hips a quick stretch while you're at it. Then, place the rose hips in a food processor and pulse several times to break them into smaller pieces. You can skip this step if you're already using dried rose hip pieces. Add the rose hips and water into a small pot and bring to a boil. Then simmer for 15 to 20 minutes on medium low or until the water has reduced by about half. Turn the heat off, let the liquid steep, and use a potato masher to squish out that juicy goodness. Strain the liquid two to three times with a jelly bag, a coffee filter, or a fine mesh strainer lined with layers of cheesecloth. Once the liquid has cooled to room temperature, stir in the honey. And finally, store your syrup in the refrigerator for up to six months or freeze it for longer storage. Rose hips contain a soluble fiber known as pectin, which is what we use often as thickener for jams and jellies. When heated in liquid, pectin expands and turns into a gel. This is a great feature, but a little unpredictable among different types of roses. 
If this is your first time making the syrup, I would recommend using a container with a wide opening just in case your syrup decides to become more of a jelly. It will be delicious no matter what though. So you might be wondering to yourself why we so thoroughly strained out our syrup. Well, mainly that's because we don't want to have the seeds, or more particularly, the hairs that are around the seeds in our food, because most sources warn that they can be quite irritating to the mouth or the intestinal tract. Whew. Good thing you watched this far and found that out, right? I hope nobody skipped out to max out their vitamin C for the day. <laughs> To make up for not leading with that disclaimer, I propose a challenge. If we receive a hundred or more likes on this video, I will experiment on myself. I've always been pretty paranoid about straining out the hairs, but a few sources claim that they really aren't that bad. Hit that like button and we'll make another video with the answer. Hey. Rose hips are in fact a very popular tea ingredient. However, people often drink it thinking they are going to receive a super dose of vitamin C. Unfortunately, this isn't the case. An eight ounce or one cup serving of rosehip tea contains approximately 7.5 milligrams of vitamin C. You can't really blame the tea. Like all teas, it is mostly made up of hot water. But this is a good reminder that how you process a food can change its nutritional content. But despite rosehip tea lacking the vitamin C punch of its fresh version, the phenol content of rosehip tea is high, which means there are plenty of antioxidants in your cup and these compounds have been shown to have significant therapeutic potential. Want to brew yourself a cup? Add one teaspoon of dried rosehips per cup. Pour over hot water. Infuse for five to 10 minutes Strain thoroughly and enjoy. Okay, maybe the orange is a little jealous of the vitamin C superpowers that rose hips have, but that doesn't mean they can't be friends. Use the leftover orange from your stylish vinegar to let their powers combine and create this tasty marmalade. But before we start, let's get the inside scoop. Yes. These are the seeds and hairs that most people try to avoid. Your situation may vary depending on the rose hips you have available. The ones we have here are quite small, and so this feels like a time consuming task that doesn't reward you with a whole lot. However, if you are looking to de seed some rose hips, I feel that carefully peeling around the seed ball is probably your best option. Find your Zen, or maybe put on a good audiobook until you've peeled enough. To make our marmalade, we need eight cups rose hips, six cups apple juice, half a cup of lemon juice, one package of pectin, two ounces or 57 grams, a quarter teaspoon of butter, five cups of sugar, one large orange peeled and cubed, one cup rose hips de-seeded, and one medium apple peeled and grated. In a large pot, combine rose hips with juice and bring to a boil. Reduce heat and simmer covered for one hour or until the hips are soft. Mash with a potato masher. To remove the seeds, strain twice through a jelly bag or a fine mesh strainer. I personally tried a few different methods, but I found the messy therapeutic squeezy technique to be my best option and got three cups of liquid. But if Santa is listening, I might need some better tools for future batches. Maybe a conical sieve? If you've got items to recommend, please add them in the comments. Next, add your remaining ingredients and bring to a slow boil until the mixture thickens. Pour into sterilized jars and process.
and voila, it makes about six cups. But any excess can be used for quality testing. Fun fact, in Sweden, a rosehip soup is enjoyed. It is sweet and served with toppings like whipped cream, nuts, yogurt, or ice cream. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like us to try the soup in a future video, or to just tell us about your rosehip adventures.